Hello people of the internet, Milo here. Today we're going over part 3 and possibly final video of the Trident build series. Let's get to it. Congratulations, you made it most of the way through. You should theoretically have the last third of the way to your build and you'll be on your way to making all the bolts in the world. What's next on the to-do list? I would say toolhead and probe. Why do I put these two together? It's, it's really simple, to be completely honest with you, because it's, it's part of the same assembly. I, I don't know what to tell you. So there's a bunch of tool heads you can choose from. It really boils down to picking a tool head that's going to meet your requirements as far as what material you're going to be printing. And that honestly has the right probe you want. What you mainly want is something that's going to accurately probe your bed. And for the record, if you don't want a bed probe, that's perfectly fine. Just know that you're, I mean, at this level, you really should have some sort of probe. Even if you're going with a kit, the Trident will come with its own Omron probe. I'm not a huge fan of this probe myself. Not for any particular reason, it's just that there are better options on the market. In my build, I went with the Voron Tap. I really like the probe. It's a little bit more involved of an installation process, but very, very nice probe. Honestly, I kind of want to run it on all my machines, my future machines. Right now I only have one, but you get the idea. But like I said, there's a multitude of options. You can go with a beacon, which is a super fast scanning probe. You can also go with something like a BL Touch. I personally don't recommend it, especially on a machine that's going to be getting pretty warm. It's your build, you do what you like. Next is the tool head and the tool head itself, you're basically going to choose form factor. So whether you want it to be direct drive or Bowden, if you're doing something like a Trident, you're probably choosing direct drive. You're also going to be choosing which hot end you're going to go with. There's a multitude of options. Some are more affordable than others. Some have different features than others. I went with the Revo Voron. It had all of the features I wanted. I wanted to be able to switch uh, nozzles quickly and without having to take a wrench to it because you could break things that way. So really happy with my selection. It's just select something that works for you. Now this might be a little sacrilegious, so to speak, but keep in mind that if you're in a, on a budget and you want something that's gonna melt a decent amount of plastic, there's always the bamboo option. Most tool heads now are compatible with the bamboo lab tool head, uh, sorry, hot end. So that's a really affordable option to get some nice melting potential. It's not going to be something like, I don't know, a super volcano or a rapido, but it's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. You also need to choose a tool head that has adequate cooling for the material you're going to be printing. Now, if you're building a Voron, you're probably going to be printing ABS or those engineering like materials. That's the whole point of the enclosure. The stealth burner is really designed for ABS and not PLA. So its cooling potential is designed around ABS. What I'm trying to say is, if you're gonna be printing a lot of PLA and you wanna go fast, you're probably better off choosing a different type of tool head. Something like the dragon burner, for example. So keep that in mind, choose wisely. And yeah, as long as you're happy with it and you and it looks good to you, it's really all that matters. Moving on. PCB Way. PCB Way is your one-stop shop to turning your projects into reality. They offer a multitude of services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, and PCB fabrication. They offer both populated and unpopulated boards, as well as a multitude of 3D printing materials, some of which include ABS, PLA, and TPU. They also have a shared projects category, where open source projects by the community are easily accessible for all. Thank you PCBWay for being the channel sponsor. Oh, <laughs> oh the electronics, so nice, so electric. Uh, what, where do I start? How about this? I'll start w with the truth. I did not record a lot of my electronics wiring. Why? I did not want to be responsible for any of you burning your house down or potentially hurting yourself drastically. I mean, at best, you saw yourself with this kind of stuff. And at worst, you die. So, I mean, dead. So, pick your poison. 
I am going to give you a couple tips. Just know you're going to be using, you're going to be working with mains wiring. If you went with a kit, great. You're in an awesome spot. Most, if well, most, yeah, no, most, if not all of the wiring you'll need should be pre cut. I can't talk. Should be pre cut, pre crimped, and labeled for you. So, most places have a wiring guide. I went with the form box kit. I promise you, they're not paying me a dime for this. Their wiring harness was amazing. I didn't even have to look. Oh, I, I mean, I double checked. But thinking back at it, I could have really just done the whole wiring diagram based on what was written on the cables. Not recommended. I did not say you should YOLO this. That's not, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm, pay attention. That's not what I'm saying now. But um, just know that, you know, I, I am an engineering student. So a little zap here and there is not, it's not going to kill me. It's happened before. But yeah, so double check your wiring. Make sure you're doing things correctly. If you know an electrician, show it to them. They may not understand what this thing does, but don't know when you're creating a short or not. So yeah, save yourself the hassle of having to buy a new home because you burned your last one down and just consult an electrician or someone who's done this before. Again, the Voron Discord server, amazing place to get all the info you need for this kind of stuff. And there's a bunch of YouTube videos going over the wiring from people that know more than me. So recommend you look at Nero. That's another great channel. And I believe the next layer is another guy who did a Voron build, CNC Kitchen. Just, I mean, really look into this kind of stuff. There's another way to go about this. And is if you have a digital multimeter, which at this point you really should have a digital multimeter, you can verify that all connections are not only have continuity, but also you can test the system little by little. Don't hook up a mo digital multimeter to mains. It's, you're... Don't do that. <laughs> Please, people, don't do that. Um, but yeah, again, I can't stress this enough. Do your research. You can't just YOLO this. Uh, you'll mess up your components. You'll hurt yourself and your loved ones. So please just consult a professional. Your first instinct would be to slap in a quick config in Clipper and to just print right away. No, stop. Read, read your config, please. You want to go to the Voron docs and I'm gonna add a little extra step. I highly recommend you go to the Voron Discord and verify that the files are in fact updated in the printer config. The printer config really is just, let's just say a, a template, a starting point, so to speak, because everyone's printer config is going to be different at the end of the day. You're gonna start adding libraries and macros and all kinds of stuff to make print the printer your own and that's great that's the whole point of this but they offer a starting point and you know what you should take advantage of that what you shouldn't do is slap on that template thinking that it's gonna everything's gonna work perfectly well the first time around here's a couple things to watch out for when you put printer config on Make sure your thermistor types and your sensor types are correct. Make sure that your motors are spinning in the right directions during homing. Make sure that your Z motors have the right step interval. Otherwise, it's not gonna go well. It's just not gonna go well. That happened to me and I was, um, I was making the bumpiest benchies known to man when I first did this. If you went with something like the stealth burner like I did, chances are LEDs not gonna work off the bat. Stealth burner has LEDs built into it. You're gonna have to enable that in after the fact. Right now, the only thing you care about is getting it to print. Once you've verified the config, once you've, I mean, again, I recommend you go to the Discord and talk to people that know about this so that they can help you through. They're very nice people if you, understand that you know what they're doing is completely voluntary so keep that in mind but let's say you finally slapped on a config that works and you're printing your first voron cube or benji 
Congratulations, when you hit print, sit back, have a bowl of cereal, I guess according to the documentation, that's what you should do. Just enjoy it. Pat yourself in the back, see how it comes out. It should take you about 35 to 45 minutes to print either or. These machines are pretty nice. Really, the next step is tuning. <laughs> and you're gonna be doing a lot of that <laughs> early on. Uh, the reason why I'm laughing is because a poorly tuned machine is like not having a Voron to begin with. People think about Vorons or these nice open source printers that are thousands of dollars and they are, it, it's synonymous with quality because people have taken the time to tune it. And the Voron Bible is basically the Ellis tuning guide. So after you print out your first Voron Q, Benchy, whatever, take it in your hand, go to the Ellis guide. There should be a link somewhere. Or even if, if you're in the Discord, you probably know how to get to the LS guide. Just do a quick uh, one of the Googles, so to speak. You'll get there and just go through the whole thing pretty much. Good news is that the Trident is actually fairly easy to tune in. It's not like a 2.4 where you have to deal with the flying gantry and squaring that up uh, correctly. So it's you have a let's just say a leg up on the Alice guide, but you'd still need to go through it. It's gonna help you understand how to get a good print and it's gonna help you understand how to diagnose certain common problems. So highly recommend you do that as soon as you possibly can. Given that I do not know if this is gonna be the last video on the installment or not, I am going to do a couple honorable mentions here. I'm gonna do a couple mod honorable mention i'm gonna i'm gonna name a couple mods i like so one mod you should consider is panel clips i do not know who they're by if you look online they're the ones that click it's like a three-part clip those are amazing they're great because you can get your panels in and out without having to use bolts highly recommend you look into that yes it takes like a decent amount of time to print but honestly you how much after all the time you spent in this build, what's a little more? There's also the magnetic corner panel things, tips. I don't know what they're called. Highly recommend you do those too. It helps secure your panel closer down to where it needs to be. Very nice, ties in the whole look. If you're gonna be moving your printer a lot, I don't know how, because if you built a 3.5, a 300, a 350 millimeter weighs like 60 pounds. This thing is unruly. <laughs> But in the event that you're built like Thanos and you want to move it around, you can also use the, you can also print the, the handles mod. I think they look very nice. I threw it on my printer. I don't move my printer ever. I hate it. I hate it every time I have to move it. It's so heavy and uncomfortable and I feel like I'm going to break it. So, but the handles help. I mean, they give me carpal tunnel, but they help. Feels like my wrists are gonna snap and my elbows are gonna collide but hey they help another honorable mention in the mod department is the scrubber brush i'll just be honest there's not a good solution for the scrubber brush for this <laughs> scrubber brush for the trident i'm actually working on a solution myself we'll see when that hits the open source market <sighs> so much work but um just th there's one that's angled see if you could find it helps a lot especially if you're running tap it's pretty much necessary i don't know why some people seem to think it's not um but anyway i digress highly recommend you add a scrubber to your voron it makes life way easier if you're printing abs the exhaust filter pretty much useless to me i don't understand why it was added my monkey brain can't comprehend it but yeah um all it does is cool down my chamber. So there's a mod, it's basically just a flat little like rectangular piece you can find on printables. Recommend you use that instead. Makes no sense. Use that extra fan to cool your electronics. If you're anything, I mean, you could try it, but if you're anything like me, it's just gonna, you know, create more problems. So I recommend you don't. That's not a mod, that's just an option. Clipper screen. 
should at least know about it. I really love the way the clipper screen looks on the printer. It's very nice. It's easy to get to all the menus and probably above all, it is so easy to just change which network you're connected to. So yeah, consider a clipper screen. Another mod that doesn't get enough love in my opinion is the removable front door mod. It's basically hinges that you can completely pull the doors out of it. And it's very nice. I gotta be honest with you, installing that door is a little bit annoying, but when you do it with these hinges, you can Take it off, take it on, no problem. You don't have to undo any bolts, none, nothing of the sort. And you're probably gonna work on your printer a little more, especially if this is your first build, because things do go wrong and you do have to do maintenance. So it's a good thing to make the panels as easily removable as possible so that you can both take them out and put them back in easier. I do hope this series has helped some of you out in some way and based on the comments on the previous two videos it seems like it has if you feel like i've missed anything and you want me to talk about it please just let me know write it in the comments and i'll get to it i gotta get to all the comments i enjoy talking to you guys so thank you very much i believe this is it for this i want to do a couple projects in the future one of which being the nozzle scrubber and uh yeah see you next time